G'day guys and uh, welcome to the Prime Trading Podcast. I've got a very, very special guest here today. We've got Mitch Georgiades from the Port Adelaide Football Club. He's actually a two-time Rising Star nominee. I don't know how they managed to stuff that up, but that's all right. <laughs> and he's also uh, just won the Gavin Wanganeen medal, which I think is for the best young player at the club. Is that right, Mitch? Yes, I'm calling both. Yes, <laughs> he's a bit humble, Mitch. That's all right. Nothing like me. Uh, but Mitch, yeah, great to have you on the show and uh, <laughs> and welcome. Thanks for having me on board. It was, um, yeah, good to have a chat. Mate, no worries, no worries. So, uh, Mitch and I have a little bit of history together. We did play a little bit of footy uh, together at Hale in Western Australia. Um, so, I was always probably a little bit better than Mitch, but he was <laughs> so, he always ran around and tried to get some cheap ones off me, which was, uh, which was always good. Um, but Mitch, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with, you know, with saying, you know, Hale was probably a massive part in, in both of our lives, and, uh, and I guess that that, um, probably played a, a pretty big part in your in your you know the start of your football journey. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it was probably the foundation for my footy years. Um, such an amazing school as you as you said, and we had such good coaches. Um, we had AFL players that were coaches, and I mean the likes of Jason Norris and Brad Weir, um, and our players like we had some unreal players. Like in your year, we had some like, the obviously amazing player. Um, we had some other really talented boys. Um, and it was just such a great environment. It was just such a great school to, to be a part of. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, I, I always, yeah, I always remember it being a. It was, it was very like, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it like that, but like, it was a pretty big deal to play first, pretty early. Like, it, like no matter what year, if you were year, you know, 10, 11, 12, you obviously started playing in year ten, um, which is a pretty, it was a pretty big thing at school. Yeah, absolutely. First, like I remember being. Year six, and um, going up to the watch like the first on a Saturday. Tom Mitchell was actually in year twelve when I was in year six. So I remember going down there and everyone was typing him up. And I was like, "Oh, this guy's like the best player in the world." <laughs> um, and, like you watch him, you think that's so big, and you, you get to year twelve or whenever you start to play. So I was like, "Enough to play in year ten, and you get there, and even like two years above, you're playing with some big boys. You're like this is the first time you're really playing with men, um, and it's such a big thing at the school, like." Then, no matter what school you're at, um, yeah, it's an amazing. And, like it's a Saturday morning, and, like it's that feeling. There's nothing like it. And I, I miss school footy. It's probably like some of the best years of my life, and it's uh, such a such a great time of year. Like Saturday mornings, rock up. You and, definitely um, idolise yeah. those blokes, hey, real early. It's like it's like you think of them as just like the big dogs. You see them around school, you're like, oh, like. You know, mate, how are you? Because they're like, you know, you see them every Saturday, they're out there doing their thing, and it's like, it's such a small world sometimes. It's like, you know, that happens everywhere around Australia. I know, it's crazy. But yes, it was awesome. It was a good game. Good speaking, speaking of idols, um, was there anyone that you kind of very early, very early on in your career started to kind of model your game off? Like, was there anyone that you, you'd pick out? Obviously, we all know your play style. You like to jump and, uh, and take hangers and... Uh, be a little bit flamboyant with uh, with what you do. Was there anyone that you kind of idolised your game on? Um, I grew up really liking Jack Rewalt. Mm. Um, obviously, just a jumping jack. Like he just jumps at packs, yeah. breaks packs. Um, and something I always like to watch and try to take a couple of hangers every now and then. And it's something he's done for years upon years. And um, yeah, it's something that I just watched growing up and um, sort of modelled. I guess you could say model my game off. Mm, 100%, yeah. I can actually see that. I was wondering who you are going to say for that and if you were going to say someone weird like a midfielder or something. Is that something you want to do? End up moving into the midfield or are you happy just sticking it down the forward well, 50? Kenny will say no. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Eventually, look, I'd like to say I could eventually, but I don't know. I've got a lot of work in between now and then to, to get into that role. <laughs> You could have a bit of a Bontempelli uh, big boy vibe rolling around in there, I think. Yeah, I just need to learn to kick a bit better. <laughs> I think you're all right, mate. I think you're doing better than the rest of us. Um, so, obviously, leading into your, you know, your draft year um, and all that sort of stuff, would you have any tips for, for young players? Because I get a lot of questions, uh, you know, I'm you know, coming into my draft year this year or, you know, I've got two or three years into my draft year. Is there anything that you really think that, uh, for those blokes that young, that like recruiters are looking at uh, more specifically, or something that you kind of started to model or change your game around, so uh, you'd be like, you know, pick me. This is this is this is me. Yeah, um, my draft year was a bit different to everyone else's. I didn't, I didn't play any footy year twelve. That is true. My actual draft 
last year. So it was, um, it was a bit different. And in terms of me getting drafted, it was just kind of trying to show the recruiters that I could do everything else and prove myself off field that I was worthy to be in an AFL system. So it was, despite not playing footy on the weekends, it was all about making sure I was recovering well, trying to get, get my rehab under the um, other way, making sure I'd come back fitter, stronger um, than what I was before. And for me, it was more along that aspect rather than footy. I was more making sure that like, I was doing everything um, off field, away from, away from the footy field. Um, you know, and there's always something you can be doing. And that's something I learned probably um, in my 12th year or year 12. Mm. Um, so I wasn't being able to play footy. I wasn't on the ground, but I could be on the, on the sideline doing extra touch. I could be doing uh, in the gym. I could be in the pool swimming. Um, and despite not playing footy, I think that was something that I try to show the recruiters and she can show mm. that I'm really dedicated to improving myself. And um, I think that's, if you're good enough at footy, you're good enough at footy. That's it's always going to be the case, but it's all about the difference between blokes and making and don't. I think that next level where they're, they're drive, they're, what they're doing away for themselves. 100%. They definitely, I think that's something that's so underrated and that people, a lot of young players don't understand is how much they look at your character and personality, like that's something that they really hold in really high regard. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what the interviews come down to. That they sort of know, they do so much um, networking and stuff. So they speak to your school, they're speaking to people, mm. your coaches, everyone. They're trying to get a good gauge with the person you actually own. If you're a DK, they don't, they don't want you to be much in lane terms. Um, so you, you've got to be someone that they, they want to have around and, it's going to make the culture of the club better. It's going to fit in well with the rest of the boys. And 100%. Going to get the most out of themselves. 100 percent. Yeah, and it, like you got to remember, that's a recruiter's full time job. Like they are 100 percent. Like that's what they have to do. Um, so as well, obviously in that you know year 12 year, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to share the photos of it because it is pretty gruesome injury. You had this massive uh, quad problem. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about you know overcoming that kind of injury and, and, and how you managed to get back to it? Obviously, you said before you got that recovery so, uh, sort of side of it as well. Um, but was there anything else that you kind of really set your mind to, to to overcome it? Like, was it a mental thing? Yeah, absolutely. It was sort of with the injury I had, it was um, I caught the cow spider and it blew up a lot. And it, I had ended up having a couple of surgeries, but it was the unknown because nothing really... No doctors, no surgeons have really seen something like this. So no, you were so bad. I was to get back to it. You were so, so bad. Like I remember so, you sending me photos of it. I was like, mate, like, <laughs> so bad. Man, it was so fucked up. Like, oh, like, I was done. I was like, my legs are going to fall off. Like, <laughs> Is that what went through your head? You are like, I'm fucked here, lads. Like, I'm done. Yeah, my footy career is over. Early days, it's like, oh, I don't reckon I'll be able to play footy again. Like, I, you should send like, a photo to my leg. It looked like I had a mountain on the side yeah, of the leg. Yeah, it's fucked. Um, but yeah, the initial just the unknown of like when I was gonna get back, if I was gonna get back, if I was gonna be able to run like, like as well as I used to, if I was gonna be able to jump and, um so that was the initial scary part. And trying to get over that was probably the toughest part. Mm. Um, but we had the people from the State Academy, people at school, um, were really good in getting me involved and getting me down to do stuff and yeah. make me feel, feel like I was the part of everything. Hundred percent. I think that was the biggest thing, and also school wise. I think having something to focus on. So I focused a lot on eight hour and year twelve, and awesome. being able to distract myself from. Okay, I'm not playing footy, but I've got something else to focus on. And I think that was something that I really valued up a lot in year twelve, just to, to get me through. I think it helped me a lot. Um, but like I said, it was just about finding stuff that I could do. Um, not so much worrying about what I couldn't. Um, and so I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't playing footy, but I could go do swimming, I could mm. go get in the gym, I could put on weight, I could do all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think that's the, the stuff that sort of turned my mindset around, and I think it's, it, it is all mindset that right you have some stuff, because you're doing it 99% of the time by yourself, mm. um, and you, you've got to get to it. 100%. So. You obviously were you, you're a very talented footballer anyway, and you you had a um, pretty good resume already behind you before you had that injury. So, um, kind of leading into your your draft year and and all that sort of stuff, um, <laughs> something that I always uh, thought was funny. Obviously, I'm an Essendon fan, and I had Archie Perkins come and say, "I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to stay in Melbourne. I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere else." 
Uh, how prepared were you to move to a new state? Because obviously you've got you know a pretty good friendship group, you've got your family, all that sort of stuff, and you've got you know a great life in Western Australia. How big? How how prepared were you to to move to a different state? It was pretty scary. Mm. Um, like I, I sort of knew that I was not going to be in WA. I think West Coast and Frio had really early peak or, or a really late peak, so there was there's no way sort of where I was forecasted to go. Yeah. So I came to terms pretty much early on that. Were you surprised to go to port? Up. Did did or did you know? No, I had no idea. So Interesting. I, port was the only club I didn't speak to. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, so you spoke to seventeen and, and they out. weren't one? Yeah. <laughs> I, I had like a two minute Zoom chat with them or like a quick like hi, like how are you going? And that was it. Fuck. And didn't speak to him but for the rest of the thing. Like I didn't have a problem meeting with him, didn't do anything with him. Um, it was oh, really? really weird. So I pretty much saw like the night of the draft or the night before the draft, like the manager rank was like, Oh you might go here, you might go there. We think you go here, but we don't think you're gonna go to Port Adelaide, but just haven't heard anything from them, but like, don't really think it's gonna be that way. It's like, okay. Um, like that's all right, no worries. So I put my thing in like how it could be in Melbourne, that could be yeah. somewhere else. And then it doesn't really hit you until since draft night, the Wednesday. Paul called your name out in sports and like it's amazing, like you're on the biggest hype for like 24 hours, and then yeah. you sort of realize after that you got to like pack up, you got to get out, of here, like, <laughs> leave your family, you're out of it, you leave your family, leave your friends, and you're away to like Melbourne to Port, sorry Adelaide, mm. and like meeting 40 new blokes, no idea, no no idea about the state, no idea about the people you're with, and it's yeah that that part's pretty daunting. 100. But I think it's been probably the best thing for me to get away from WA. And mm. Experience something life elsewhere. Um, grown up pretty comfortably and had a good group of friends and family. So yeah, it's been awesome to get away. Love every minute of it. Hundred percent. And I guess. Um I, I always find because I'm obviously over in Queensland now, and every time I go back to Perth, thing, things are pretty much the exact same when I've left anyway. Like nothing's really changed that much. Yeah, so it's exactly. Like, whatever. <laughs> so big. Yeah, everyone's doing the same thing. So it's like whatever. I'm all good. Um, so obviously, how how comfortable were you when you did end up moving to Adelaide? Like, did were what happened? Like, did you end up at a you know in a share house, or did you get a host family? Um, initially, we moved in, and there's all the draftees in our house together for, for a week or two just to, <laughs> to get to know. Like, Good way to get to know the blokes. And that was pretty, was pretty like weird. Like everyone just rocking up, everyone's yeah. like trying to suss out who's who, like what's everyone like. Yeah. It was like, you look at it now, you go, you're not lucky you were that first week. Like, it's so different. <laughs> <laughs> it's been funny like that. Mm. And then after that, we moved, everyone got shipped out into like different players' houses. Yep. And I moved in with Ollie Wines, so this before Christmas, like for two weeks. Shout out to Wines, you're obviously Ollie a big Wines. fan of the show. Yep. Um, so we do love Wines, I know we'll be listening. Yeah, big <laughs> man. Um, and so I moved in with him and Darcy Byrne Jones. Yeah, cool. It was a good fun for two weeks. and. I mean, he's a pretty good player for, learn up for your first two weeks at like an AFL club, so that was, yeah. that was a pretty good start. Um, and then it was Christmas break, come back, and I moved in with a host family, with me and another player, Miles Bergman. And that was good, it was really good to, mm. to sell into, make sure that like, someone there to look after you, sort of your cooking, your everything, just to, to get into the swing of things and crazy, it's pretty full on. Yeah. Um, but then COVID happened, and everyone went home for six or eight weeks, and I came back and I moved in with Trap Boat for a couple of weeks. Mm. So, Jeez. yeah, not a bad place. You've, got to, some, you've had some pretty good freaking. I had all the wines and Trap Boat. <laughs> um, and then we went away in a hub for a bit. Yeah. And I've come back and I've moved in with um, Ryan Burton and I've been with him for the last two years. Yep. And yeah, I love that. He's um, yeah, unreal to live with him. Yeah, plenty of plenty of laughs. That's, that's a good, that's a strong bond to, to spend two years together. I think that that's a, that's a really. Yeah, you not me out yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing, I guess. Thumbs up to the obviously yeah. big fan. Um, so, obviously moving more into your AFL sort of side, what have you found the biggest difference uh, between moving from you know school footy, state footy, into moving to that you know more professional environment when it more comes to diet and nutrition? Uh, sorry, nutrition and training, because obviously a lot of people are, are always ask me. I'm like, don't ask me. Go and ask Miss Georgiades or one of the boys that actually does it for real. So. Ask them. So, what would you say is the biggest difference between professional and semi-professional to school life? 
think it's just the mindset sort of thing. So you, like, school footy, state footy, you're like, you go do a train and you go do whatever you want, really. Yeah. There's nothing, you're not too worried about anything else. Like, right now, like, I train and I go home and go, all right, first thing I need to do is just I need to fuel up. Like, yeah. Get to get some food into me. And I'm like, how, how's my body feeling? Um, do I need to do some recovery? Or whatever I need to do. Like, if I was at school and stuff, I'd just go play golf. I'd go to the beach, yeah. go surfing, go like, wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much about mm. it. But it's so noticeable. You can, it like catches up on you so quickly, especially when you're doing 15 k sessions, 300. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, it hurts you. Um, it's massive. And so it's just about managing that um, and saying, oh, I'm a bit sore. I can't really go. I want to go play golf. Like, I love golf. Yes. Um, like, I play probably too much golf and not enough footy. <laughs> But it's good to have that. It's really good to have those hobbies outside of footy. Like I think that that's one of the most important things because a lot of the time you'll burn out if you're just focusing on one kind of thing. Like it's really important to have those avenues that you can escape to. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone, it's been a massive thing in the club. Like everyone's just getting into golf. Like it's Love everyone's that. a bug. And it's, um, <laughs> like everyone, day off today, everyone will be out there on the course. Like I'll probably head out in a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's just yeah, uh, your sleep, making sure you go all the right things in place finding a system that works for you um, but a system tra- like Trapo is so down to the T like he's got to do everything scale it at really? this time at this time blah 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 and then some folks are like they just rock up and they just do what they do mm. um, and it's about finding a system that works for you and some people might be up there like Trap and some people might be down completely the other end of the scale but yeah, um, yeah it's just about just reading into everything a little bit more I think yeah 100% no, that's great. That's a, I think that the mindset is such an important thing and, and I'm going to get into confidence and that sort of stuff a little bit later. But um, first off, I've got to ask, what's, uh, what's leading in 2022? Obviously, you've come off a few, you know, really strong years of, you know, starting to really make a name for yourself. Um, what's what's in store for Mitch Giardi's 2022? Because I think it's going to be a big year. Um, you can be arrogant if you want. You <laughs> Not too arrogant. So I don't want you to get fined too much by the club, but... Um. <laughs> nah, I'm already in trouble with them. Um, I don't know, I think just playing some consistent footy. And, yep. Um, just being able to be a consistent player in the team, mm-hmm. making sure that I'm rocking up every week, having an impact, um, and being able to play different roles. I think that's something, something to add to my game. Um, there's more in the past, it's been run and jump, Mark, lead, yep. kick a goal. Yep. But now it's trying to incorporate more things in. So it's whether I'm playing higher, being mm-hmm. able to get up the ground, being able to use um, my athletic ability to, to um, I don't know, take on the game a bit more. Yeah, cool. Being able to get around the ground a bit easier. So I think that's something I'll look to work on this year and hopefully see a couple of rewards from it. But, um, 100%, a couple more Gavin Wanganines. Or are you out of the age eligibility now? Actually, I don't know. I think it's under 21, so I might squeeze in again. But Could have back-to-back Gavin Wanganine medals around your neck. Well, <laughs> there must have been anyone else if I had this. <laughs> Shout out to Bergman. He might be in the hunt, maybe, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones is fine. Yes, yes. Um, we love his mullet. Boys. We love his the mullet. mullet. He's, yeah, he's got, he's got a mullet like you. He's a bit I mean, of a cult figure, isn't he? Yeah, he's a cold figure. He's turning into dreads as well. It's, you know, <laughs> Just because he doesn't brush it or anything? <laughs> no, he doesn't brush I don't think he looks after it. That guy's... Yeah, he's, he, needs a, he needs a little bit of... Um, bit of love, I reckon. <laughs> bit of hairspray, maybe. Might, might yeah. do him some good. Um, so, confidence is something that I want to get into because it's... Um, I, I, I know that you're a very humble person. Um, you know, very down to earth. But at the same time... You know, you're, you're taking your hangers on people like Max Gorn, you're jumping in front of people like Charlie Dixon and, and taking marks off them, which I think is, uh, says a lot about, you know, where, where your, your confidence is at as a, you know, first, second year player, um, you know, jumping up and taking those marks. I guess, what, did, did you ever change, like, you've always kind of jumped and, you know, taken marks and that sort of stuff, but obviously it, it might be, a, I don't know what it is like, but it could be a bit daunting when Charlie Dixon's like, mate get the fuck out of my way. I'm trying to take a mark here and you're jumping in front of me. Um, is there anything that you do in your mindset to just say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm here, I've, I've arrived, you know, this is my game, just I'm going to play my game? Um, because I think that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty big thing. Yeah, it's like, it's fucking scary when Charlie's <laughs> going down behind you. I jump on my head and he turns around and goes, fuck, 
you know, and that's pretty scary. Does he get pretty <laughs> hated? He gets pretty hated, eh? <laughs> crawl up in a corner. <laughs> how am I going to get through this? But, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's something, I don't know. It's something I've always done. Like, mm. You look at all your wines, like, you, you burst or back up. Yeah. Like, on the ground, it's something he does really well. I don't know. It's just something I've always done, just jumping at balls. I, I don't get scared for some reason, mm. but... I don't, I don't really get worried about jumping into the contest, even though like Kenny always been like, you're an idiot, like what are you doing now? You're, you're gonna hit yourself, like, we don't need you, you just, I'll just I'll take a second, like yeah. you know, think, he thinks I'm like um, Lloyd from Dumber and Dumber, like <laughs> telling me there's a chance, like at every, um, every contest, like 99% of the time I won't take it, but I think there's a 1% chance that I will. Hey mate, you keep um, flying, you keep taking some pretty good marks, so you've got a pretty nice little highlights package package actually. Well, I will add a couple more hopefully next year. Yeah, good good. <laughs> but um yeah, no, it's, I don't know, it's something I've just always backed myself and mm. I think that's something that you've got to do at this level because if you're at this level you have obviously proven at, proven at some stage that you you're able to be here and I think initially getting some confidence and learning off people like Charlie. Yeah. Um, is something that I think you, you really got to take a lot from it. If you have that little initial burst where you, you prove that you, you can take a couple of good marks, um, that you start to back yourself more and more, and then um, with the boy, people around you telling you to back yourself as well, like we've got such a good confidence in that. Like, mm. never have I ever not been told really to go for marks. I've always been told, okay, we well, want you jumping, we want you doing it, but sometimes we won't have the right time, it's just back in that right balance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just the, something I've always done. And, I don't know whether it's confidence, like some things I lack confidence in um, on the ground, like whether it's going through a stoppage, mm -hmm. picking up a ground ball, sometimes I, I pull, not pull away, but I don't commit 100%. You don't go 100% at it, yeah. I feel yeah. like in a, yeah, in a, in a marking contest, I mm -hmm. never really pull out of it. It's just yeah. something that, um, I don't know, I've been built, I don't know, not built for, but um, no, it's just a way I for some yeah. reason. Is, uh, oh, yeah, that was going to be my other question. Is Ken Hinckley one of those guys who will just say, you know, jump for your marks, and that kind of gives you a bit of confidence to do it? Like, how important is it to have that culture at the club and also have a coach that backs you in 100%? Yeah, everyone's like, they're all back you in 100%. Mm. Um, 100% of the time, but they've never, like I said, never really been told not to jump their mark. And yeah. It's something that we're working towards with, with me, Charlie, Todd. Jeremy and Mace and now just about make sure when we take it out each other's turns and yeah. um, try not to get in the way of each other too much because they're all pretty handy one on one like Charlie one on one don't really want to get in his way anymore yeah no um, <laughs> and I, I say well clear of him so, learn your lesson um, yeah I've learned my lesson a couple of times um, <laughs> won't go back there so that's no, um, yeah a really strong culture about everyone backing themselves and doing what they do because like we said we're all there for a reason we've all proven ourselves at some stage along the line mm. um, to be at that level yeah 100% so uh, I guess you've been you've been in the camp uh, for the pre-season and, uh, and had probably the best look at um, at, at, at everybody and, and how they've returned from Christmas break and all that sort of stuff who's primed for a, for a breakout year in 2022 from the Port Adelaide Football Club um, can't go past Zach Zach Brothers Love it. Um, he's such a gut dude. He no, is actually so a jet. Good. Hey, it's actually, like, and he's so small and he just hits yes. so hard. Like he's probably the least person I'd like want to run into a tackle. Which is like, so weird because you look at him, and you're like, like, oh, oh, you know, I'll shrug you off, or like, you know, oh, yeah. but like he and so I was actually looking at a stat last year, and him when he's in your because you know he had the big injury last year. Yeah. Um, when he was in your team, you guys had like a stupidly better like I don't it just worked better like when he plays it's, yeah. it's crazy how one player can make such a big difference he's, he's crazy and he's so creative on the move like mm. he's seen kicks he's pulling these kicks off but he's so talented no one can like no one else in the team can even try to do that yeah like if I do that I'd probably just miss my whole boot like, <laughs> just embarrassing and I've done it before and <laughs> it's no good how how <laughs> You've got that trio of blokes now, um, you know, Dersmer and Butters and those boys that, that have come in. Um, have they brought a bit of spunk to the team, do you think? Like a bit of personality? Yeah, I think so. We've got a really good young group of boys. Mm. But even if you're talking like Dan Houston, yep. Ryan Byrne, they're all 25 and under. Like we've got such a good young 
group and we, we all get on really well and we're all really tight and I think yeah we, we do bring a lot of spark and I think some of the older boys do get annoyed at us sometimes we bring a bit too much <laughs> um, yeah Robbie and Chad probably tell us to shut up a fair bit but it's, um, no, it's good fun it's a, it's a great group to be around I think you guys do have a pretty good mix of you know, oldest type heads and then a really good young core coming through. So I think Port will be, uh, will be very good for a long period of time. Leading to my next question, where what's next for Mitch Georgiades? Where do you see yourself, you know, in, in five years? Um, is there anything, any really big goals that you're kind of striving towards or anything that you really want to, really big things that you want to get out of your career? Um, obviously, you want the, the accolades. Mm-hmm. Team success is obviously the biggest thing. We want. I want to win a premiership for the next. I want to win a premiership this, this year. year. And I want to win yeah. that next year. Mm-hmm. And that's the. I think with the group we've got right now, it's we're in such a good period for it. Yeah. Um, and in terms personally, just don't want to look too far ahead of myself. You just want to take it one step at a time, but just Beautiful. continue to play strong, really strong footy, uh, become a key member of the team. Um, not, not looking at like the accolades like all Australian stuff like mm. that obviously if I'm playing well playing good footy that stuff will hopefully come yeah. in the future but just to, to keep developing my craft and being able to play different positions on the ground something I, I want to work towards in a couple of years and um, be a versatile player um, and yeah just keep improving myself on and off the field and hopefully get a couple of, I'll get a uni degree done as well which would be good to, nice. to keep me busy in case of um what are you not going away? Yeah. Hopefully. Well, what, what, what are Hopefully. you studying at uni at the moment? Yeah, I'm just doing a commerce degree, just something Beautiful. just to tick it off. It's yeah. just um, it's nothing too, too major. I'm doing one. Just a couple of units every year. So it's going yeah. to be the longest commerce degree ever, but it's um, a 12 year commerce degree. So it's probably going to be valid by 12 years, right? Well, hopefully you spend 12 years in the system and you'll be good to go uh, as soon yeah, as hopefully. you're finished. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, it's always good to, always good to have that. Um, and I think uh, two more questions. Uh, I, I, I want to know how, how poor you're going to go this year because I think that you guys have had a pretty good little trade period. I think that you guys have got, you know, you've had a really strong team for probably four, five, six years. Like, you you know, you've, you've really started to push yourselves. Um, but unfortunately, it's been that prelim kind of final. Is there anything that you guys have been focusing on um, more, obviously don't give about your secrets to the demons and all that sort of stuff, but, um, but <laughs> you know, is there anything you guys have been really working towards to, um, you know, to push yourself into that real top echelon, that top two, the best best team in the comp? I think we're just looking um, to be a bit more efficient mm-hmm. around the ground um, and scoring a bit, a bit better. Um, obviously, we've got such strong weapons in our forward half and we've got people like Obviously, Charlie, Robbie, Gray, Arazio, Fantasia, yep. um, Butters, Rosie, um, Motlop. We've got like some really, or Jeremy, Todd. Mm. Um, we've got some really, really talented people out there. It's about allowing them to get to work. And I think sometimes our ball movement hasn't allowed us to do that. So I think this year, hopefully, we, we play a style that um, is really exciting and mm. gets everyone involved and gets everyone to show their, their talents because like I said like that that four line is pretty pretty crazy yeah um, 100% if you've got some of the most talented blokes in the, the highlight reels you ever see yeah so, um, I think yeah it's just about being more efficient and um, throughout the ground and we've got some really strong people for half back Riley Bonner mm. Dan Houston Brian Burton again like I said all all creating some overlap speed hopefully uh, if that all goes well hopefully you'll see us um, very late in September and holding up a flag yeah, beautiful. That's uh, that's what we want to see. Um, yeah, I'm a bit dirty on Orazio, um leaving the Bombers, but that's all right. Well, I can I can still love him because he's a bit of a highlight, a bit of a highlight player. But that's all right, Raz. Uh, yeah, we love Raz. He's a good. I'll let, I'll let it slide. Um, <laughs> I'll let it slide. So, last question uh, for you, Mitch. I think that I would love to know. I'm just glad that I got to know young Mitch as well. Uh, so I would know who you're talking to. But what advice would you give uh, young Mitch Georgiades? Oh, it's, I've got this thing in the front of my booklet. It's my, my booklet that I write everything. It's just my one sort of quote that I, I refer back to all the time. It's control the controllables. And I think it's um, looking at one step at a time. If, it's, if you can't control it, there's no point worrying about it. I think 
coming in and playing footy and um, you get nervous, you get really worried about what the outside people are saying, what, what, how you're performing internally. And yeah. um, I think it's just being able to look back in every aspect of your life and taking it one step at a time, not looking too far ahead into the future um, and just controlling, like I said, what you can control. Um, you're like I said, in every aspect of life, whether it's footy, whether it's school, whether it's um, friendships, family. Um, yeah, I think it's something that I've really started to try live by um, and hopefully it, it keeps working and um, hopefully it does help in the future. Mate, that's brilliant. Um, and I guess that advice isn't just for you. Uh, that's advice for everyone that is uh, any young player that's out there that's looking for, uh, you know, for some good advice. Um, we do have a lot of, a lot of, uh, I'd like to know the age demographic, but I think it's pretty young for prime training. I don't know. But, uh, I'd like to know. But anyway, Mitch, uh, mate, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on. I really, really appreciate um, your time and everything. And uh, hopefully you can you can go uh, win some golf later. Um, but guys, make sure you go and follow uh, Mitch Georgiades. Obviously, Mitch, do you want to give us your, uh, your socials? Uh, it's just Mitch Georgiades, something too special. Oh, yeah. Guys, if you, if you want to spell Georgiades, it's G E. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> R G I A D E S. How's that? Did you do that off by heart? Yeah, mate. Come on. <laughs> mate, I'm proud of you. Well done. <laughs> Georgie Not easy to do. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Oh, fingers crossed I spelled it right. Um, but yeah, that's how you spell it. So make sure you go and give him a follow and look after him. He's up, he's up to 10K now. So he's uh, thanks to me. So he's good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Mitch. Thanks for, having, uh, thanks for being on, mate. And uh, good luck in golf. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me.